bring us three quarters and we'll politely inform you that it's impossible to join. However, if you bring four quarters, well, that thing's a holy picture. You see, right now you can sign up for only one dollar. That's right, one dollar. Then you'll pay just ten dollars a month. Hey, how y'all doing again? Craig here. Uh, MS-660 Hetzel clone. I've got it put together now. Minus a few parts. I had to scrounge some out of my scraps. Uh, I'll go over here real fast with you. Uh, try to explain what they shorted me. Uh, what I've done to try to correct it. And then we'll do a first start. Hopefully it'll fire. Um, I was going to run this with a plug in the decomp valve, but it's got so much compression, I'm afraid uh, pulling it over is going to break the cord, so I'll put the decomp valve back in it. So here it, here it is. Readjust the camera here. Sorry if I get a little shaky. Put my eyes on here. There it is in all of its glory. I bought the full wrap handlebar after I bought the saw. I actually bought the full wrap when I bought the um, big bore kit. As you remember in one of my earlier videos, the big bore cylinder would not seat down onto the crankcase with the piston at top dead center. It had about 250 thousandths of an inch gap between the cylinder base and the crankcase um, flange where it seated. I don't know what was going on with that. I don't know if it was the wrong cylinder. I had already done a substantial amount of port work in that cylinder, so I did not even call Hutzel. Didn't even try to, to contact them because I knew at that point I'd already altered it. They wasn't going to do nothing. Um, Done a little muffler mod, three quarter inch pipe. All I'd done was went in there, cut the internal baffle out of it, and then I went in and opened that hole up, took my three quarter inch copper pipe, cut it on a 45 degree angle so I could set it back in there, and I brazed it from the inside. And I just took some high temperature gloss black paint, painted the whole muffler. Had a little bit of chip right there, the paint was missing off of it, but I'm not worried about that. But um, as I described in one of my other videos, the chain break, um, I was missing a actuating lever that operates the tension on the handle here. Um, without that actuating lever, there's no spring pressure against that, so it'll just flop around. I've got one on order. Uh, I've got it all covered up, but I'll put it back in once I get it. It's you'll probably going to take two or three weeks to get it in. Clutch spins freely. Uh, this little screw that holds this guide plate on was actually missing that. Uh, robbed that out of some of my Husqvarna extra parts. Um, what else is missing? Oh, I was missing two nuts that actually hold this dog on. Uh, they're just eight millimeters. I had a couple of them laying around. Um, also, they shorted me, I hope you can see this, the two bottom muffler mounting bolts, taps. They shorted me limb. Again, I went to my um, Husqvarna, actually not my Husqvarna stuff, but some of my other used um, chainsaw parts and found two Allen head cap screws that would actually work in here. So I'm just going to leave them in there. I'm not even going to change them out. Um, I think that was about it. Oh no, there was a wire, the, the actual ground wire that went from the switch around and actually bolts underneath one of the bolts, mounting bolts for the coil, it was missing. So I just, I had some extra wire, so I just made one of them up. I uh, put a few scratches on it already. But other than that, 
Um, as I was putting it together, uh, I failed to put this bushing in. And there's a ring bushing that sits right there. On that AV mount, I failed to put that in. So after I had the saw completely together, I uh, went to my IPL list to figure out where they went. And I had to tear the saw about halfway apart to get them back in again. Build another one, I won't do that. So at this point, we're going to gas it up on camera. Put some oil in it and we're going to do a first start. I gotta put my little ball up there in the spot where it goes. But just to prove that nothing's in it, it's a dry system. Shake your gas up, especially if you use anything that's got E80, not E85, but ethanol in it, excuse me. The water can separate and go to the bottom. This is my 32 to 1 oil mix. Everything that I, I run, I run 32 to 1 in. I'll sacrifice a little oil coming out the exhaust and some foul spark plugs to keep from burning the cylinder out. There's that. Clear full. Oh, where did I lay my cap? I have no idea if these things leak. So I'm just going to use the screws to tighten it down just a little tighter. I just made a mess. Let me get a rag here and try to clean that up a little bit. Keep it from running everywhere. It isn't too awful big. Last quart of this oil I've got. Uh, for some reason, I can't find it anymore. I uh, don't know if they've quit making it or what's up with this. I really did like this oil. It was really tacky. cardboard. Okay, here's the big test, see if she leaks or not. I'm going to start it without the side cover on it. Well, I don't see no gas leaking, that's a good sign. Going to readjust the camera here. Sorry about the shakiness. Okay. See how many pulls she takes to start. I think she just popped. There she goes.
guns. And as you can see, it's oiling a ton already. Put my rag underneath here to Man, that's just a pouring out of there. Gonna have to turn that down a little bit. Let me take this camera out of this holder here and see the oil dripping off of it there. There she is. Sorry about the fingers. The Farmer Tech Hutzel MS660 Complete Parts Kit Clone stock cylinder did not do any port work to this cylinder all i done was um, went in there and cleaned them up just a little bit took some of the roughness out done the muffler mod put the three quarter inch pipe in it and i left the front opening i left that in the cover i actually Worked that um, back opening up a little bit, opened it up. Like I said, cut my brass pipe, my copper pipe, cut it on a three or on a 45 degree angle, and then I brazed it from the inside. I don't know if you noticed, but the pole cord on this thing wasn't the longest. I'm going to have to work on the kill switch issue. Try to figure out why it's not working. Let me put the camera back in the mount here. And we'll see if we can't do a restart. See how it restarts here. Might be a little flummy because I had to choke it and shut it off. Guess it might work if I take it off and choke. I'd say she's really flooded. I will um, see what I can't do with it. If I get it running, get that kill switch fixed, fixed, I'll put another video up. Hope you enjoyed. See you in the next video.